Father e del suo Santo e del suo Volo. Non mi basta un po'. Now thus, that I have nothing else to preach. I have no other sermon. I have no other philosophy. I have nothing else to say. No other message. But I preach Christ and Him crucified. This sermon, this message of the Holy Cross, Again, according to the words of the Holy Apostle St. Paul. These words of the Holy Cross are for them that are expecting to hear some kind of wisdom or some kind of knowledge or some kind of miraculous, wonderful, interesting conversation. For them who are seeking philosophy, for them who are seeking all sorts of of other conversation, the Sermon of the Cross is foolishness. The rantings of a sick mind. The message of the cross is nonsense. The message of the cross is the worst kind of foolishness. The message of the cross. We all know what that message is. It is the cry of our Savior Christ who calls out to each and every one of us, whoever would like to follow me, whoever wants to follow me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and come after me. The way that our Savior has expressed, the way that he has expressed this call is in the least possible, demanding way that language can express itself. Whoever would like. But my beloved brothers and sisters, that precise expression, whoever wants, Whoever would like to follow me is for me the most awesome and frightening, <coughs> the most fearsome phrase in the whole of Holy Scripture. I'm not afraid of someone who forces me to do something. A person who comes to me and forces me because he is superior in strength or in weaponry or in authority and he forces me to do something he makes me against my will because in the final analysis i am not responsible i have no responsibility if a person forces me who is able to force me by use of force and threat against me, against my family, to do something. This is not so nearly so frightening <clears throat> as our Savior Christ saying to us, whoever would like to, if you want to, if you would Because here, the authority is not one of force. The authority is not one of superior strength. The authority is one of love. This whosoever would follow me is not being said by someone who sets himself apart, apart from me and by virtue of his high authority, forces me. No, this is the one of the Trinity. Even our Savior Jesus Christ, who from the cross, upon the cross, took upon himself, after he had bowed down the heavens, he who is one of the Holy Trinity, the Word of God the Father, took 
took upon himself all of my sickness, all of my sin, all of my condition, and not only the condition of one person, but the condition of all of mankind, and not the condition of all of mankind that had been up until that time alive, but all of mankind that would ever thereafter live. All of their sins, he took them upon himself and freed us by his death upon the cross, tore up the handwriting that was against us, and now he said, look, I made you. I made Adam and Eve. I made the entire human family. And I gave you a gift. And that gift is free will. Freedom. To choose, to reject, to comply. I gave you this gift. This awesomely, frightening, two-edged sword. Freedom. Now you thought. Use the freedom that I have given you. And who says this? The one who loves us so much that he does not excuse himself in belief from anything having to do with our redemption. My beloved brothers and sisters, this challenge is the one that issues from the cross. This challenge, where our Lord tells us very clearly, when he is the same God that spoke to Isaiah, come let us reason together. And though your sins are red as blood, I will make them white as snow. Though they be scarlet, I will make them like the wool of the lamb. But know this, that there are terrible consequences. You are free to do as you will. But the consequence of not accepting, not following me, is that you'll be separated from me. In other words, the consequence of our rejecting God is that we get exactly what we want. God is not going to force us into paradise. God is not going to force us to love him. But the consequences of not loving him are getting exactly what we want. We will be without him. We will not have his company. This is the terrible chord that he tells to Isaiah of. This is the terrible sentence that he mentions in today's gospel. That if you are ashamed of me and of my word in this adulterous generation, then I will be ashamed of you. Not because I don't want you, but because you have rejected me. You don't want me. Even as it is in this life, if we do not want a lawyer to represent us before a court, before a judge, then we have that freedom. So it is, because our Lord has made images in this life to help us understand the next one. That we, having rejected Jesus Christ in this life, this rejection has eternal consequences. And we will be bereft of his support on judgment day. But for all of those who have accepted him and want him, he will say to his father, Behold me and the children which you have given me. My beloved brothers and sisters, the challenge of the cross is there right in front of us. Look at it. But try to see past the fragrant herb, the sweet basil, the fragrant chrism and oil that we have put on it. The lamps and the incense, the candles. Look past all of that and look at the cross. 
because that is the cross that our Savior asks us to take up and follow him. It will be heavy. It will be difficult. But there is such sweetness after it. But it is the choice that every saint made. In Estacios, his memory is celebrated today. A very early martyr of the church. Around the turn of the first century. In Estacios was a very powerful officer in the Roman Legion. Having accepted Christ, everything fell apart around him. He lost his house, he lost his servants. He lost his wealth. He lost his position. On his way to Jerusalem, his wife was kidnapped. His children, one was taken off by a wolf and the other by a, by a, a lion. And there he was, all alone. He did not curse God. All he said was to repeat the words of the great Job. Even though he had greater misfortunes than Job, at least Job had a place to sit that belonged to him. It was a dung hill, dung hill, but it was his. And his wife was there. She wasn't very much help, but she at least was there. Someone he knew. He was totally alone. And what were the words that came from his mouth? The Lord has given, and the Lord has taken away. As it has been best to the Lord, so has he done. Blessed is the name of the Lord. I came forth from my mother naked, and I returned to my mother the earth again naked. But I know that my Redeemer lives. Oh. And these are the words that were said even more justly by St. Estancios than they were said by Job. And later on, all of this was restored to him. And as if that wasn't enough, by his martyrdom was the sweet name of Christ, for his martyrdom because of his love of Jesus, he was deemed worthy of the title of great mark. And his portion in the kingdom of the heaven, together with his wife, St. Theophisti, and their children, St. Agapius and St. Theophisti. This is the challenge that our Savior calls forth from the cross. Whoever would may follow me. This terrible, frightening challenge. May each of us respond positively to it so that we might enjoy the kingdom both here and in the world to come. The grace and love and compassion and love for mankind of the all holy trinity father son and holy spirit which has saved us and to whom is good glory into the ages of ages amen